welcome to this season's finale of Just Next Door, where we'll be giving you one last taste of Philadelphia. I'm Darian Alston. And I'm Ann Wickersham. In this jam-packed episode, we will be giving you a look at everything from beautiful paintings in the art museum to tasty soul food and much more. Stay tuned to find out what's coming up next. Hey guys, this is Just Next Door, where we take you around Philadelphia's amazing attractions. Stick with us as we take you on a journey you won't want to miss. Hey Darian, are you hungry? Yeah, actually I could go for a bite. I know this cool place that does really tasty homestyle comfort food that's good for the soul, and it's not too far from LaSalle. That sounds good right now, but I guess we'll have to eat with our eyes to, on today's segment of Philadelicious. We will be taking a look at Auntie's Biscuits. Auntie's Biscuits started out small a few years ago and now has grown into its own store. We started off with the food truck. That was just a lot during the summer and the cold winters, you know what I mean? So now we're here at the store and it's like all our dreams are starting, to, we're starting to see it manifest now. We got everything in here we need. The inspiration to open the store came from a close relative. We've basically been edging auntie, but she's been cooking for us and we've been eating her food our whole lives so we know how good her food is and we've been telling her for years that everybody else will enjoy it. Despite being known for their chicken and biscuits, Annie's tries to stand out from the rest of the soul food industry. And everything is like more than average here, whereas though we give out a lot, it tastes different. Can't give y'all the recipe. We got a lot of little, we got a lot of little tasty stuff. Not trying to have everything that, that's on every other soul food menu. Despite opening in July of 2018, the little shop has seen its fair share of celebrities, from NFL players Marshawn Lynch and Buck Allen to the NBA's John Wall and Marcus Morris. And they're like family. We're gonna do a wall of fame in here when we get when we get a little situated. Have everybody's picture up here that comes in and give us the support. That's all it's about. You know what I mean? Just. We support each other, and whenever they got something like a little camp or something like that, towards though, if we just bring them biscuits or water or something for the kids. Auntie's Biscuits hours are from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Tuesdays through Saturdays, and 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday. For Just Next Door, I'm Steven Silvestro. I would definitely want to try some of those biscuits. If you guys want to indulge in that amazing food, Auntie's Biscuits is open from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday, and on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., located on 2126 East Shell Nav. Tight on cash, but still want to have an amazing time? With this week's segment of No Money, No Problem, we've got you covered. As we go down to Tees Golf Center, where you can enjoy batting cages, mini golf, and a driving range, all for under 20 bucks. We're here at Tees Golf Center in Conjahawken to show you what kind of fun you can have with this $20 bill. All right, so I think the first thing we're gonna try out is the mini golf. It's $6 for adults and it's $5 for kids. I think I'm gonna head out to the red course and see how well I can do. All right, so now we're at the batting cages. Um, they offer baseball and softball behind us. Um, I am wearing a golf outfit. It's not going to be great for the baseball, for the batting cages here. So Josh is going to do the baseball swinging. Uh, you get 20 pitches for just $2 here at Tees Golf. All right, so now we're going to be a little bit quieter here. We're going to take on the driving range now. You get three options here at uh, Tees Golf on the driving range. You can do a medium bucket, it uh, has 45 balls in it for just $6. You can do a large bucket for uh, $9 with 75 balls in it. Or you can do a jumbo bucket for $11 with 105 balls in it. So we're going to go with a jumbo um, just because I enjoy the driving range. And we're going to take some swings. All 
that's going to wrap it up for us here at Tees. I'd like to thank the general manager, Charlie, for having us out here today. Um, it was an awesome experience. We've been out here for almost three hours now. It's getting dark out, as you can see. Um, it's a great way to spend $20. All of that that we did today was just $20. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. So with that being said, that's it for this edition of No Money, No Problems. Send it back to Darian and Ann. Life when you're hitting golf ball, I mean, baseballs to the moon. That's money well spent if you ask me. You're right about that, Darian. If you guys want to relieve some stress, Tease is open all year from 10 a.m. to dusk. After a quick break, we will be taking a close look at the Philadelphia Community Corps and their impact on countless people. to Just Next Door. For this edition of Service with a Purpose, we will be looking into the Philadelphia Community Corps, where they help to revitalize shattered neighborhoods. This nonprofit not only aims to use deconstruction as, the, as a tool to grow the economy, but also creates jobs while being environmentally friendly and creating less pollution. Uh, we are the largest uh, nonprofit deconstruction, salvage, and reclaim center in the Philadelphia area. And basically, we uh, instead of do demolitions um, where they destroy the, the products, we take out old, uh, you know, like walnut shelving, stained glass, uh, valuable pieces, and we sell them back here for a low cost to uh, the local neighborhood. We offer everything from doors to windows to tile, and we do a paint recycling program. All the sales funnel back into our job training program. So we have kids mostly through the ages of uh, 18 to 25 who are uh, you know, non-violent offenders in and out of the system and we basically give them a chance to get OSHA 30, OSHA 30 certified and uh, decon certified and then we uh, bring them out to job sites and deconstruct homes and buildings and churches and businesses that would otherwise be dem demolished uh, with a wrecking ball. We give tax deductible donations for any drop-offs uh, at Philly Reclaim. It could be your old doors, it could be the antiques in your uh, attic or your basement, or it could be uh, other wood and lumber goods. So we also have our executive director, Greg. He's the start uh, of the business. He started about six years ago, and he used his experiences in um, working for job repair and ha home repair uh, after Katrina. Um, and he did that for a few years and that kind of inspired him to make a reuse program out of all the stuff that was demolished and deconstructed and he brought it back to the Philadelphia area. Philadelphia Community Corps has such a huge impact on Philadelphia. We invited the organization's executive director, Greg Trainer, to come and talk to us today. Hi Greg, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. So something that I really want to know about this organization is what is your overall goal? in what you guys do every day? Well, so it's kind of two parts of that. Uh, our mission is to provide career training uh, that empowers citizens to revitalize blighted neighborhoods by deconstructing buildings and salvaging materials for reuse. Long term, our goal is to become a central center for reuse and to basically shift our local demolition economy in a more sustainable direction while creating a lot of jobs. 
That's awesome, great, that's awesome. Can you talk about how uh, the Philadelphia Community Corps has uh, gotten started and how it evolved over time throughout the Philadelphia community? Yeah, it's, it's been a long journey. Uh, so again, kind of two answers there. We've been in, you could say we've been in business for four and a half years now. We launched in September 2014 uh, with a project here at LaSalle University on Chew Avenue in partner with uh, your economic development office. Uh, we took, we work on seven, seven row homes over there that were being taken down to salvage materials. Uh, and we've been growing steadily since then as a job training program. But the real origins of it go all the way back to 2009 when I was a student at Temple University. I was returning from being in the Gulf Coast after Hurricane Katrina, uh, doing disaster relief as a member of AmeriCorps NCCC. And that experience really changed my life. I came up here to go to school. I was going to be a journalism major actually, and uh, while I was studying the abandoned housing issues and the problems that they caused, I realized this is just another disaster zone. Just like I've been dealing with in the Gulf Coast and I'd worked on in Peru as well, it was a disaster that just was man-made and it happened over generations. So people got used to it and kind of threw up their hands and said, well, it's Philadelphia, we got abandoned housing, but it doesn't have to be that way. So I looked at that problem and said, well, I know what to do about that. I'm gonna create an organization like I worked for in the Gulf Coast up here that has the ability to go through that abandoned housing and clear it out so that the rebuilding process could begin. And um, it's evolved from there towards more of a workforce development model uh, to find financial sustainability. Obviously, you guys have been around for a good amount of time. Um, what's the one lesson that you've learned from all the work that you have done and all the good that you guys have done for the community? Uh, you know, a lot of lessons have been learned. It's, it's been a real roller coaster of a journey. You know, we've had times where it feels like, uh, you know, we're about, to, everything's about to happen for us and, you know, we're on top of the world. And then there's been times where it's like, man, I don't know how we're gonna make it through another month. You know, it's, it, when you're first starting out, it's, it's really hard to find any sort of stability. So the one lesson I would say is hang on and uh, be persistent. And you know, when you come across the barrier, which happens, there's a lot of barriers that are gonna get in your way, uh, be prepared to innovate and change and adapt. The Philadelphia Community Corps business model has changed uh, a good amount. We've, I think we've stayed true to our origins and the heart of our mission, but it's changed a good, the model for how we get it done has changed a lot over the years as we ran into challenges and said, well, there's no way forward we have to make a change. We have to adapt to the environment that we're in in Philadelphia, and we just have to keep pushing. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, have you gotten any recognition from your community, and how has that inspired you to go further? In, di in different ways. I would say one of the challenges that we face right now is that a lot of people still haven't heard of us. Uh, so when it comes to the greater nonprofit industry, uh, you know, the ecosystem of foundations and city funding and stuff like that, I would say that there hasn't been uh, too much awareness of what we're doing. Uh, you know, we're kind of like outside of Center City and we don't get seen as much. But from the communities that we work in, you know, the neighborhoods like Kensington and West Philadelphia and different places where we've done projects around Philadelphia, there has been a lot of recognition from the neighbors and the local community groups, people who we've been able to help out with affordable building materials. Uh, people who we've been able to put to work, you know, their, their family members have earned jobs through our program. So the people who were, we set out to serve our beneficiaries, there's been a lot of recognition from them. And it, it feels really good to know that what you're doing is actually making a dent in these mammoth problems that we have in Philadelphia, that there are people who have, whose lives are different. You know, we have former job trainees who are now supervisors we're running crews. We have former job trainees, uh, at least one that I know of that started a company uh, and is now his own boss working in the construction industry. And that's what, we're, that's what we want. That's what we hope for. Okay, thank you so much for coming in today. This was so awesome to hear about. Thank you. If you're interested in being a part of the Philadelphia Corps Impact, you can donate through their website at www.philadelphiacommunitycorps.org or visit the Philly Reclaim Store located at 111 B West Erie Ave, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Stay with us as we take a little break. We still have a lot more in store when we come back. We still have to come to Life Hacks, Fast Facts Philly, and Historical Paintings.
life is hard. Effective consent is simple. Do not make hookup decisions if you won't remember them. For more information on sexual assault, visit nomore.org. What you reading, loser? Nothing, man. I'm just trying to study for this task coming up. You know, I have to keep up with work. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm trying to study. Leave me alone. Hey, man. Leave him alone. He's trying to study. All right, man. You got it. Still here, we'll be seeing some cool life hacks that you can save some time and money on. On the next segment, we are staying close to campus as we invite our viewers to jot some notes down about DIY tricks that you can do at home. Need a little charge for your course keys breaking? We've got you with easy fixes on the way. Hey guys, this is Gio Lancey and this is another edition of Life Hacks. So do you ever throw away these old containers of disinfectant wipes? Well, you can use your last one, and when it's empty, you can fold plastic bags and use it as a container for plastic bags. So you line up your plastic bags, you tuck them under, and then you fold that one with it, and keep folding and keep folding. And then you put it in here. And that can be the storage container for them. And then when you're ready to use it, you'll just stick it through the thing, and one can come out. On to our next hack. If you ever want to keep a door from latching, you'll put two rubber bands around it. And then the next one. See, it won't latch, then you can just open it right up. Have you ever been laying in bed and the charger was bent, so the charger started to rip? And you don't want that because then it won't work. So you can get an old pen spring. You can open the spring a little bit and put it on in there. Just wrap it all the way around. That's it for Life Hacks. Sending it back to Darian and Ann. I have never been that successful when it came to doing DIY projects. Is there a hack that you say really worked out for you, Ann? Actually, I think we're in the same boat, Darian. I've tried to go on YouTube and do step-by-step -step tutorials, but I've never had any luck, especially when it comes to speakers. Speaking of luck, let's see how much these lucky pedestrians have this week on Fast Facts Philly. We will be outside the Philadelphia Met with some tricky questions about Philadelphia musicians. Fast Facts Philly is where we test the knowledge of everyday Philadelphians. Our inside correspondent, Sean Kelly, will be taking us down to Broad Street in front of the brand new Philadelphia Met. Let's see how they fare. On this edition of Man on the Street, we're standing right on Broad Street in front of the new Met venue, where we're going to ask some people if they know they're Philly musicians. Let's find out. All right, first question. Which famous rock duo has names that start with Daryl and John? Daryl and John, rock duo, Philly musicians, right? Philly musicians. What, Metallica? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chitty Bang? I don't, I don't even think I know a rock duo. That's sad. Now I got They're from Philly. Oh, that makes it worse. <laughs> Daryl and John, uh, Hall and Oates. That's correct. Hall and Oates. You consider them a rock group? Yeah, they have rock songs. <laughs> I guess. I wouldn't consider them a rock okay. group. Okay. What year did Boys to Men release their first album? Uh, let me see. 82? 98? Nope. 1980? No. 1993? 96? Nope. <laughs> I'll I say 92. Ooh, uh, 1991? That is correct. 91? Yes, 1991 is the correct answer. <laughs> Boys to Men released Cooley High Harmony in 1991. Thomas Wesley Pence Jr. is a famous DJ and record producer. What is his stage name? 
DJ Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> I don't know the Green Thunder or something. I don't, I don't know DJ Pence. <laughs> DJ Caesar. <laughs> DJ, I don't know that one. <laughs> the answer is Diplo. I know Diplo, but I know his real name. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac Back is the name of the debut single of what famous Philly rapper? Um. Will Smith? Nah, no, I'm not sure actually. I hate dude, but Meek Mills. Well, that's easy, Meek Mills. I don't want to say. No, no. Give I, up? Yeah. Meek Mill. I, I was going to say Meek Mills, but that didn't sound like his debut song. I feel like he had more. And there you have it. Some people knew their Philly musicians, others didn't do so well. But you learn something new every day. Reporting for Just Next Door, I'm Sean Kelly. They got more than I would have got. Who's your favorite artist, Arian? Yeah, that was all right. I love Big Mill, though. He's versatile, and he's for the culture. Do you like culture? Do you enjoy beauty? Our next stop will embody them both as we take a look at the Philadelphia Art Museum. Our team will be on the fleeting moment as they take a closer look at Impressionism. So the new exhi exhibition at the Philadelphia Museum of Art really focuses on our Impressionist collection, works um, done by these extraordinary French painters active um, in the late 1800s. They're artists who are known principally for their um, sort of spontaneous or seemingly spontaneous um, pictures of French life, the countryside, working with a kind of broken brushstroke, bold colors. Um, but the exhibition shows them the extraordinary range of their work, not just as painters, but also as draftsmen and women, as sculptors and as printmakers. Took up, um, as a great challenge. So the exhibition offers an extraordinary opportunity to take a really broad view of, of the Impressionists and to see not just their landscape paintings, but their still lives, um, their pictures of Paris, of kind of a modern city, of nightclubs, of factories, um, of cabarets and the like. Um, and also bringing us into, as I'm standing in a gallery uh, filled with portraits and the ways in which they just depicted um, the family members and friends uh, using both paint, um, charcoal, and pastel. So it's an extraordinary opportunity to see the range um, of work that these artists um, produce. So it's, it's one of the most comprehensive and really integrated um, experiences of Impressionism, not just as a painting movement, um, but really as a, a movement in which artists were very active as printmakers and as sculptors as well. So it's um, a nice opportunity to maybe break away a little bit from a textbook understanding of these artists or and thinking about, you know, specifically what they were doing in, say, 1870, um, in 1872, 73, but to really um, think about uh, the, the entire Impressionist movement a little more holistically. Crazy how they abandoned the traditional linear perspective and avoided the clarity of form to utilize the beauty of the moment. It reminds us that not everything in life is perfect. Life may seem messy at times, but if you keep moving forward, it will blossom into something beautiful. If you want to visit the Art Museum, the hours are Tuesday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 8.45 p.m. Man, I could stand in there all day. It's hard to comprehend all the history. So many masterpieces. Being surrounded by all that greatness makes you want to do something. Speaking of which, let's take a look at our last stop on today's list, Bartram's Garden, named after John Bartram. This garden offers a tour of plant collections that date all the way back to the beginning of the Bartram family. Barsham's Garden is the oldest surviving botanic garden in the United States, housing a wide variety of herbaceous and woody plants. Let's take a look. So Bartram's Garden is the oldest living botanical garden in all of North America. John Bartram bought 100 acres of land here on, in southwest Philadelphia in 1728, and we've been here ever since then in various forms. Located on Lindbergh Boulevard, Right next to the Schuylkill, Bartram's Gardens is free for all visitors to explore. We offer a ton right now. We have free boating on Saturdays in our community boathouse uh, during the season. We have volunteer days on the second and fourth Saturdays of the month. Um, we offer a lot of community garden space. We offer a lot to like the Southwest community. Um, you know, we're free, we're open to the public. We have tours. We have, yeah, the historic house, the garden. Yeah, we have a free public dock. 
We have fishing. Um. <laughs> Bertram Gardens is a national historic landmark that can both educate and entertain. There's beautiful um, plants that are growing here, flowers, some of the oldest trees in, uh, of their species in North America are here. And it's such a great area to hang out along the Schuylkill River, which you can't really do yeah. around here. We also, our farm, we have a four acre urban farm. It grows 15,000 pounds of chemical free produce every year. Uh, and those are, the produce is all for sale at uh, Clark Market, Clark Park Market mm -hmm. on Saturdays. Uh, and then up at, at the top by our trolley stop on Thursdays, I believe, and it's really good. Stop by for a tour of the garden on the weekdays from 10 to 4 p.m. or the weekends from 10 to 6 p.m. Wow, honestly, the beauty of all the plants and the scenery was absolutely breathtaking. If you're interested in visiting the garden, the hours are Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Tuesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That was a great way to close our show. Well, that does it, folks. Unfortunately, the fun has to end sometime. That about wraps it up for this season of Just Next Door. It's been one crazy ride. Thanks for sticking with us this whole semester. We want to give a big shout out to you, our fans. Without you, this would all be for nothing. Thank you for all our hardworking crew and all of our producers. Be sure to keep up with us and submit your comments and suggestions to LaSalle TV at LaSalle.edu. Don't forget to check out the website for more info at LaSalle.edu slash LaSalle TV. I'm Ann Wickersham. And I'm Darian Austin, signing off. <laughs>